guys, it's Anthony here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about car sales training tips and primarily overcoming objections. There's going to be plenty of videos on this channel talking about overcoming objections, but today, I kind of want to start out with figuring out the difference between what I call an excuse and an objection. Objections are going to get thrown at you in all different forms, and whether you've been selling cars or any type of product for you know, a week, a year, a hundred years, it, it's, it doesn't matter, a day, you're going to get thrown objections at you, and you need to know how to handle them. Most importantly, you need to be able to handle them in such a way where it's not your conscious mind thinking of what to say. You want to save that for higher level problems. Your subconscious mind has to know exactly what to do. It's got to be muscle memory, right? Imagine you're a golfer. You get up to the golf ball. They say it takes like 11 things to go right for you to hit a golf ball. And trust me, I'm not the guy, right? I'm not going to teach you any of those 11. But if you're up there thinking about it, and if you played golf, we've all done it. All right, I got to tuck my shoulder down here. I got to make the arm straight. All these crazy things. Put the book underneath. You're done. If you have to think about that, you're done. So, you need to be able to overcome these objections right there on the spot without thinking, but you got to make sure they're actually objections. You don't want to be giving credit or integrity or validity to what I call an excuse until it's proven to you that it's an actual objection. Okay, so the number one reason why people will, for the spirit of this conversation, let's say object, the number one reason, and I'm going to write it here for you, the number one reason... And I want you to see if you can think about it right now. I wonder what he's going to write. Number one reason is to complain. Okay? So complain. Why would somebody want to complain, right? Why, why do they want to come in to the dealership or to your place of business and just complain? Can't they just buy the car? Can't they be happy? You have to understand. And, we, and we, we're going to talk about this in other videos. And we have about the psychology of sales. You got to understand that. Before these people are customers, they're people, right? They're people. People want to be heard. People right now, I think it's an intrinsic feeling they have that it's built into society, right? That they inherently need to express how they feel at all times. People are constantly searching for a platform to scream about how they feel, which is great. People should be heard. And to be a great salesperson, you have to understand that. You need to you need to satisfy their needs to be heard, but understand that it may look like an objection, but it's just a complaint. They're just complaining. You don't know what's going on in their home life. You don't know if they go home and nobody listens to them. And this is their one time to kind of exercise that right that they feel they have, right? The customer's always right. So they're complaining just to almost hear themselves speak, but also you know, nobody wants to be a bobblehead. Nobody wants to be like this. Yes, the entire time. Yes. Could you do this? Yes. Could you do that? Yes. Could you put this much money down? Yes. Nobody wants to do that, right? Nobody wants to do that. So they're just complaining just, just to feel like they're being heard, right? Understand that. Just because they're saying no doesn't mean it's real. It means it's a complaint. Once again, that's an excuse to me, okay? Now, number two, let's say they're not complaining. Let's say they're not complaining. What's number two going to be? All right, so number two... Is stall okay number two is stall why would they be stalling okay why would they be stalling well they're stalling because you know let's think of that that old adage the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know right change is scary even if they know it, even if everything adds up right the math of it makes sense they love the product it's just scary right because in their mind it's like okay i came here in said vehicle I'm surviving, right? Nothing crazy is happening right now. You know, let me just ride it out, right? It's the fear of the unknown, right? Can I afford it? Oh my God, could I afford this payment? Well, we'll get into that as well, how to overcome that. You know, there's a thousand different ways we're gonna overcome that objection, but you know, they're thinking in their head, you know, should I just stall? Should I stay put, right? You see this all the time in relationships, right? Toxic relationship, the other guy, the other girl's definitely better for the person, but they're in this now. It's what they know. They're comfortable. So they want to stall, right? They want to stall. One of my favorite quotes, one of my favorite quotes, right? People are not afraid to spend money. They're afraid to make a decision they're going to regret. People are not afraid to spend money. They're afraid to make a decision they're going to regret. The money's the easy part. It's, it's the fear of regret. It's looking back saying, you know, did I make the wrong decision? Buyer's remorse, right? Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, 
He, he lives by certain principles. I've actually adopted this one, and that's a regret minimalization principle. He doesn't ever want to look back on his life with regret. And buyers are the same way. So they're going to stall as not to make the wrong decision. So let's say they're not complaining. Let's say they're not stalling. What would the third reason be? Like, what's of these three reasons that they're going to make these excuses, the fourth is actually going to be a real objection. But of the three excuses, what would the third be? I'll tell you right now. And part of my handwriting, clearly I should have been a doctor, um, but I'm not smart enough for that. But um, negotiate. All right. All right. So number three, what's the number three reason that a customer may give you an excuse? And what is that excuse? I'm going to write it down here for you. All right. Number three. And this is the one that you're probably going to have the most obvious experience with part in the handwriting, but number three is negotiate. Okay. They want to negotiate. Customers need to satisfy their need to negotiate. They need to feel as if they played a part in making that deal happen. And, and that's the making of a good deal, right? A great deal. A great deal is when two people work together to reach that common goal. You know, one person gives a little, the other person gives a little, one person takes, the other person takes. That's a good deal. That removes any resentment. That that really creates a strong bond and relationship between the customer and the salesperson, which will lead to residual business and referral business. Customers need to feel as if they played a part in getting to that goal, right? We talked about earlier, nobody wants to just be a bobblehead saying yes the whole time. The real magic is when the customer reaches your desired outcome and feels as if they got there on their own, right? And we're gonna go over all of these techniques in future videos, car sales training videos, overcoming objection video videos, negotiating videos, all of the techniques. We're going to go over those in future videos and, and negotiating my favorite thing to do. I'm going to teach you all of the tricks on how to make sure you negotiate like a top one percenter. But the number three reason, if they're not complaining, they're not stalling, they're just negotiating. Now, here's a funny thing. <laughs> You're going to hear customers say this all the time. I don't want to do the back and forth. I'm not, I'm not doing the negotiation. I'm not doing the back and forth. I don't want to do that. No, Sue, here's the thing. They don't want to do the back and forth only when it's not working to their advantage. They love the back and forth if it's saving the money, right? So think about it. As a customer, if every time you send that salesperson up to their manager, it saves them 30 bucks per month, they'll do the back and forth all day. They'll be playing you like a ping pong ball, right? They don't want to do the back and forth when it doesn't work in their favor. If they truly didn't want to do the back and forth or negotiate, they would have said yes to the first number. But clearly they do want to do it. They want to do it for sport. They want to feel as if they played a part in making that deal happen. Number four, number four. So let's say they're not complaining, they're not stalling, and they're not negotiating, all right? So they're not complaining, right? They're not just trying to hear themselves talk, right? They're not stalling because they're afraid to make a bad decision, right? One that they're gonna regret. They're not negotiating for sport. What would number four be? Number four, and this is where you have to make sure you go through the filtering process. Number four is valid, okay? It could just be a valid objection. So what would a valid objection be? Well, a valid objection is if you're trying to sell a family of eight a convertible, okay? They, they just can't fit all in there. So that's a valid objection. A valid objection would be, um, you know, let's say they just don't have the money to put down. Like, it's, it's just not there. We've tried every way to make sure that we get as much possible cash down because cash is king, but it's not there. We look at their credit app. They only make X amount of dollars per month. It minus their bills, their rent, it, we know it's not there. Or let's just say they're a 400 credit score and we just can't get them approved. You know, but, So these are all like valid objections or things that are gonna be thrown at you, but you've gotta make sure they're not just excuses. We're gonna go over in future videos how to isolate the objection. Isolate the objection, one of my favorite things to do to really find out what the hiccup is, if it's even a real objection or if it's just an excuse, we're going to go over all of those in future car sales training videos. But let's recap really quick, okay, guys? There's four of them right here. The four reasons why a customer may give you an excuse. Only one of them is actually a valid objection. Number one, they want to complain. Number two, they want to stall. Number three, they want to negotiate. Number four, it is valid. It's a real objection. At that point, we will cross that bridge. We're going to offer alternatives to our customers to find a way to make a car deal. Just because it's a valid objection doesn't mean we're not closing. We're closing the deal right then and there today. And that's why we need to make sure all of the ways we overcome these excuses or objections are buried in our subconscious mind 
so we don't use our conscious mind on those they just come out we spit them right out like muscle memory we got to use all of our thought power all of our critical thinking on higher level problems that's overcoming real objections hope you enjoyed this car sales training video breaking down the difference between excuses versus objections excuses versus objections how do we figure out which is which future videos we're going to go over all the techniques to overcome all of those talk to you soon hey my friend thank you for watching and if you want to see videos just like this one please like and subscribe to our channel we really appreciate the love and support and don't forget leave some comments down below i'm looking forward to all of your interaction and feedback and i can't wait to bring you more videos just like this one thanks again i'll talk to you soon